What's going on, Summoners? My name is Crumbs, and today we're going to be diving into Episode 6 of our Built Different series. In case you're not familiar with it, we use this series to break down powerful Korean builds with a fun minigame on the side. Be sure to stay tuned so you don't miss out. On your left, you'll see two bars with one indicating risk and the other carry potential. These are color coordinated to help you figure out how useful yet difficult the builds are. All right, let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got Gwen in the top lane. With the dominance of tanks and scaling champions, Gwen is finally starting to get more attention. On top of that, Nashra's Tooth got a readjustment that really helps her out. Her laning phase is relatively safe with some practice and her late game is insane. She offers a high amount of AP damage, true damage, mobility, split push power, and is an amazing team fighter. Honestly, if you're looking for a solid hyper carry top laner, you should check out Gwen. Taking a look at her popular Korean build, you'll be running Teleport and Ignite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Unflinching. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Nasher's Tooth, Lucidity Boots, Divine Sunderer, Demonic Embrace, Rabidons, and Zhonyas. Gwen offers a weak laning phase, but to make up for it, she's easily one of the best scaling champions in the game. Unable to be matched by neither tanks nor fighters, Gwen can take on any foe. Whether you choose to split push and win the side lane or group up and dominate the team fight, she can easily adapt to your every need. Just keep in mind that it'll take a lot of practice and time in order to use her to her full potential. Overall, Gwen is a solid pick that only gets better the more you practice her. Moving on to our next pick, we've got Mordekaiser Top. Similar to Gwen, Mordekaiser has started seeing a bit more play due to the abundance of Hyper Tank's top lane and with the flexibility of AD mid champions. On top of that, Nashra's Tooth works wonders on him now with the increased cooldown reduction. While he may not match Gwen's Hyper Scaling, he does become a powerful pseudo tank that can pump out some decent damage. Plus, if he ever falls behind, he can always become an ult bot. Overall, if you're looking for an AP top that can play as a powerful juggernaut, look no further than Mordekaiser. Diving into his build, be sure to take Ghost and Teleport as your summoner spells. Your runes will consist of Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Revitalize. Looking at your items, you'll be building Nashra's Tooth, Sork Shoes, Iceborne Gauntlet, Demonic Embrace, Force of Nature, and Rabidon's Deathcap. Mordekaiser is a powerful top laner that is unmatched once he hits level 6. That being said, you need to play safe early due to your lack of flash. Once out of laning phase, Mordekaiser can easily adapt thanks to Nashra's tooth. He can choose to split push and generate pressure for his team or he can carry teamfights by being a powerful frontliner. Before we continue on with our other Korean builds, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. But if courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Pulling us back in and into the jungle, we've got Echo. He has always been a decent pick in the jungle, but with Nasher Tooth changes, he's here to take advantage of some free LP. One tricks around the world have always said that Nasher's Tooth outvalued Lich Bane when ahead. Well, with these changes, it's looking to be his new core item. Just like Ezreal, Echo likes to abuse powerful new items and enjoys pairing them with defensive ones. So if you're looking for an AP assassin that doubles as a bruiser, be sure to check out Echo. Taking a look at his build, you'll be running Flash and Smite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. Moving on to your items, you'll be building Nashra's Tooth, Sork Shoes, Iceborne Gauntlet, Demonic Embrace, Rabidons, and Zhonyas. Echo can really struggle early on due to how vulnerable he is to invades. However, once he finishes his first few clears and hits six, he becomes hard to stop. Offering a free escape with his ultimate and some amazing ganks, Echo only gets stronger as the game goes on. Plus, with this build, he gets extremely tanky while also dealing tons of damage. Moving on to our next jungle pick, we've got one of the few champions that truly thrives in the jungle, Nidalee. 
Nidalee has always been a powerful jungle pick when in the right hands. Her aggressive playstyle allows her to dominate games when ahead and a good Nidalee ensures that will always happen. While she is incredibly difficult to play, with enough jungle knowledge, she can easily 1v9 games. If you need a jungler that can shut down weak early game champions like Hecarim, then be sure to check out Nidalee. Diving into her build, you're going to be taking Flash and Smite as your summoner spells. For your runes, be sure to take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Divine Sunderer, Sork Shoes, Demonic Embrace, Zhonyas, Death Stance, and Abyssal Mask. As previously mentioned, Nidalee can be an absolute monster when in the right hands. This means you'll need to practice not only her combos, but your overall jungle tracking if you want to unleash her true potential. She thrives on aggressive plays, and with this build, she truly never falls off. Instead, she switches from a hyper damage dealer to a bruiser. Taking us into the mid lane, we've got Riven. Riven is a champion that has always shown strength in the mid lane. Made popular by Faker, she's able to punish mages and easily win skirmishes with her jungler. Thanks to her high damage and mobility, she's incredibly difficult to gank while also being difficult to survive against. On top of this, Riven can navigate nearly every matchup with enough experience which makes her a reliable pick. If you're looking for a strong mid bruiser, then look no further than Riven. Moving on to her build, be sure to take Flash and Ignite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Unflinching. Taking a look at your items, you'll be building Prowler's Claw, Lucidity Boots, Ravenous Hydra, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and Maw of Malmordius. Riven can be an extremely difficult champion due to her insane mechanics. However, with enough time and practice, you can learn the basics of the champion in order to pilot her to victory. While Riven is able to kill her laner, especially thanks to the added mobility of Prowler's Claw, it's not as easy as it seems. Due to the shorter lane, you'll need to manage your wave correctly in order to look for a kill. Overall though, Riven is a reliable pick that can consistently win you games with enough game knowledge and practice. Pulling us into our next mid pick, we've got Pantheon. This powerful aspect has gone from dominating the mid lane to smashing the top lane to finally coming back home to the mid lane again. His ability to not only solo kill his laner, but to roam around the map makes him extremely dangerous. With even a slight lead, Pantheon is able to invade to kill the enemy jungler. While he's there, he may even stop by to tower dive your bot lane if you're not careful. Overall, if you're looking for an aggressive AD version of Twisted Fate, then you've found him. Taking a look at his build, you'll be running Flash and Ignite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be running Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Mana Flow Band, and Scorch. Finally, for your items, be sure to build Blade of the Ruined King, Lucidity Boots, Iceborne Gauntlet, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and Force of Nature. Pantheon's biggest weakness is his inability to stay healthy in lane. If you let the enemy poke you out too quickly, your champion becomes pretty useless. That being said, if you're able to get a kill, you can quickly snowball. Pantheon's ability to roam makes him dangerous as he can easily get his allies ahead and helps get picks before objectives. On top of this, he's able to shred nearly anyone in the game thanks to his build and his natural armor pen. Now before we move on to our final few Korean builds of the video, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what skin line would you want your favorite champion to be a part of? Regardless of what it may be, make sure to let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's dive back into the video. Moving on to our AD carries, we've got Sivir. With the era of hyper carries upon us, Lethality Sivir was guaranteed to make a comeback. Her ability to outpressure enemies and harass them early makes her a powerful pick. Hyper carries rely on farm, XP, and time to scale. With Sivir's early game presence, she's able to make plays with her team while the enemy bot lane is stuck farming under turret. Overall, if you're looking for a way to dominate versus champions like Jinx, Aphelios, or Zeri, then be sure to check out Sivir. Taking a look at her build, you're going to be running Flash and Exhaust. As for your runes, be sure to take Dark Harvest, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Mana Flow Band, and Scorch. For your items, you'll be building Ravenous Hydra, Lucidity Boots, Mana Mune, Cerildus Grudge, Black Cleaver, and Dustblade. Don't forget to get your tier as soon as possible, by the way. While Sivir may not match the hyperscaling of champions like Jinx, she can still be incredibly strong. 
This build puts all of her damage into her Q, which allows her to poke out enemy carries before they even get the chance to auto her. With a safe laning phase, she can adapt and play safe if her jungler needs to play topside. As for her team fighting, she still deals a ton of AoE damage due to her items and Q. Even if the enemy drafts multiple tanks, she can swap her secondary page to grab presence of mind and cut down. Moving on to our only support pick, we've got Morgana. While Morgana has often been outshined by champions like Lux, she can still be incredibly useful. Her black shield is invaluable on carry champions as it offers an easy answer to picks like Vi, Skarner, Kaysante, etc. On top of this, she's able to provide a lot of crowd control and disengage thanks to her ultimate and Q. Overall, if you're looking for a well-rounded support that's looking to make a comeback with a new build, check out Morgana. Diving into this new build, you're gonna wanna take Flash and Ignite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be running Glacial Augment, Perfect Timing, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Spell Thieves, Zhonyas, Lucidity Boots, even Shroud, Abyssal Mask, and Morello Nomicon. Morgana is a relatively safe champion to blind pick since she has little to no bad matchup. Her shield is incredibly powerful at stopping a lot of key crowd control abilities and her Q roots enemies for an eternity. While she does get outpaced by a lot of other supports, this build turns her into an AoE debuffing machine. Even Shroud, Abyssal, Morello, Glacial, and her ultimate make for a massive teamfighting combo that is nearly unmatched. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be hard, and sometimes you'll need help or just someone to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Last but certainly not least, we've got yet another powerful combo that has shown a lot of success in Korea. Let's give it up for Talia and Anivia in the bottom lane. With Talia as the carry and Anivia as the support, these two are able to provide massive amounts of zone control for their team. While their early game can feel a little weak, they quickly ramp up and take over the game with just a few item components. Between their zone control and crowd control, it doesn't matter if they one-tap their opponents. With even a slight misstep, the enemy is sure to lose at least half of their health bar. Let's start taking a look at Talia's build. For your summoner spells, you'll be going Flash and Ghost. For your runes, you'll be taking First Strike, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. These runes give Talia not only some bonus damage, but a lot of free gold as the game goes on. Finally, your items are going to consist of Everfrost, Sork Shoes, Archangel Staff, Shadow Flame, Rabadons, and Void Staff. Moving on to Anivia's build, you're going to be taking Flash and your choice of either Exhaust or Ignite, depending on the situation. For your runes, be sure to take Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. These runes allow Anivia to whittle down the enemy over time so that she can eventually go for the kill with Talia. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Spell Thieves, Everfrost, Sork Shoes, Archangel, Staff, Rabadons, and Zhonyas. This powerful duo looks to take advantage of their massive zone control in order to dominate fights. With both of their AoEs and crowd control abilities, enemies have to carefully watch their step or they'll quickly get punished by losing a big chunk of their health bar. If this pair is ever ahead, they can easily dominate the laning phase with high kill potential. Even if they fail to gain a lead, they both scale incredibly well and eventually become near impossible to kill. They can move to objectives and ensure that no one walks in to contest. The only issue they really have is making your team a bit AP heavy, but with your objective control and anti-siege, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Overall, if you're looking for a duo that loves the control mage playstyle, look no further than Talia and Anivia in the bottom lane. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.